Hello. 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 How you doing? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, How Peter. Hey, hey, Carlos. Peter. How you doing, Ingrid. Ingrid? Hey, Carlos. Hey, Peter. How you doing? Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Where, where, where are you, Peter? <coughs> where are you today? Well, I'm in, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm in Booth Bay Harbor, Maine, which is on the mid coast of Maine on the Atlantic Ocean. And oh, wow. we stick out on a peninsula. My house is not quite at the end of this peninsula, but we're surrounded by wilderness. Wow, that oh, sounds beautiful. amazing. Wow. Yeah, wow. And you, Carlos, where are you today? I'm surrounded by trees in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and, the only thing I hear. and I am surrounded by swamps here in Mississippi. <laughs> Each are everywhere. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so nature nature everywhere, everywhere. we're good <laughs> mosquitoes no mosquitoes. this is good <laughs> <laughs> this is the season oh god yeah it's just getting crazy but we have already people joining us and okay. this is going to be a great 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 evening we have okay. here hey johan from unwrap from Belgium, we have from Kentucky, and then I know we at the beginning we oh we have someone from Bogota, Colombia. There you go, hello, Bogota. Another one from Bogota, Colombia. This is this is good, and at the beginning we just always try to wait a little bit for everybody to join. But today we have a crazy huge storm happening here. Mm -hmm. With tornado warning the whole day, with like lightning, and it's been like crazy. I don't know. I think I think after the solar eclipse, <laughs> something changed. There. The weather changed. Yes, yes the, the, the weather is moody here. <laughs> yeah, here in Atlanta it was very very sunny that day, and after the eclipse, it started raining until today. It's still raining. What about you, Peter? How is the weather there? Perfect sunny day for the eclipse. And today there's a chill rain falling. Oh, same. No. Wow. so it's yeah. been rain for all of us. All yeah. Of us, yeah. <clears throat> wow. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But welcome the rain. Welcome the rain because yeah. that's how oh, we yeah. just get all this green and beautiful. Well, in Atlanta, flowers. we need it. Yeah, we need it because here is a lot of pollen. So the mm. streets turn yellow, your cars turn yellow with the pollen everywhere, everybody allergies is killing everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when it rains, you watch everything. So we survive with the rain. So yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, this was this was a, a good, good week. I'm I'm already excited because I don't know, Peter, if I told you that I'm about to leave, I'm about to go to Europe. Mm -mm. So after this week, um, we will not do the show for about a month because I will be, I will be traveling around Europe. I will be so far. I will be visiting Spain, England, uh, uh, the Czech Republic, and Belgium. So I'll be presenting in the four countries. I it will be four countries. I think eight cities and 13 venues so far wow nice. so yes yes, yes. it's like Very exciting good. exciting mm -hmm. i even have a, a really amazing friend here here johan he's organizing things from me there in unwrap belgium so that's just going to be amazing. just incredible yes 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 yes, yes. so I, I cannot wait for this to happen so. Yes, 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 yes. And you, do you have you do you have any any event coming, Peter? No particular event right now. No. No particular. No. You you writing more books? I'm writing regularly. I write a lot, and I've got a meeting with the movie producers on Friday. Hopefully, I'm going to finish the last the end of this final chapter that I owe them, and then they'll be out raising money and making the movie. So that's what I've been working on steadily for three years. Wow. wow, yeah, yeah. For everybody to know, Peter has his best-selling book, Heaven is Beautiful. Mm -hmm. How Dying told me that death is just the beginning. And that's going to be actually the theme for today, talking about your incredible journey of survival. 
journey after two near-death experiences. So this is amazing. And all of us are writing books. Carlos is also in the process of writing. I'm writing another book. It's called um, I Found Jesus in Vegas. It's a real story. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. And I'll be like, what? <laughs> well, he found me, but uh, sounds better. I found Jesus in Vegas. So. In the oh, yes, most yes. unexpected way when I was with the homeless. So it was really amazing. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. are all the stories that kind of like happening through us so we can share them with the world. Oh, so yeah. That, that's what we're here for, to share the, our stories, you know. And when Peter started telling us his stories, we're just going to floor because it's just amazing. Amazing. I, I think we, we need to remind everybody to just write your questions because this is one other thing we do, Peter. We at the end, we just check all the questions or the comments and then we're open to answer yeah. the questions that people will write throughout the chat. So remember to write your questions and at the end, we will be answering. Responding, yes. Yes, 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 yes. So I think that, oh my God, as just introduction, I just, just very, very short. It's just um, Peter's story is just incredible. Peter had two near death experiences and he will tell us what he wants to share about that because I don't want to kind of <laughs> say too much because he's an incredible also storyteller and he can just bring us through what had, he had experiences. But as I mentioned, he has his amazing book. And I don't know, Peter, I don't want to say too much. You just can tell us about yourself. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, I have had two near-death experiences. First, I should say thanks for having me on your show, Carlos and Ingrid. I appreciate thank it. Um, good thank to you see for you coming. Again, yes, welcome. thank you. for <clears throat> What an honor. I'm glad to be here. Nice to be asked by you. Um, so I have had two near-death experiences. My second one was in 2015, and it was a 100% Widowmaker heart attack. And my first one was in 1980. I was ice climbing in Alberta, Canada in March. Okay. The I was, I was out west on a student exchange program and I didn't want to go back home to visit my family because there was a brokenness in my family that I was escaping from. Oh, wow. So I didn't want to go back out there. And in the, in March and spring break, a couple of weeks off, I found a fellow who had a, an expedition planned, a eight day snow caving backcountry skiing into the wilderness of British Columbia to up to this mountain called Mount Assiniboine, and then a one-day ice climb in Alberta, which is right next door, it's just over the border. And I'll, I'll spare all of the details of the high adventure story. It's, uh, it was life-threatening. The, the, in the, the first part of my, my trip, backcountry skiing, we had a few incidences where uh, we had come across an avalanche that had happened the day before. There was a point at which the first night we were out there, the cabin that we were going to stay in had burnt to the ground. Wow. And so, and there was no snow to build a snow cave with. Oh, wow. So we had to make a, make do underneath an ice flow that cracked all night. And so we began our trip with this adrenaline rush of n necessary survival in these sub-zero wow. temperatures in the middle of the wilderness. But over that period of time that week, we bonded very well and learned to trust each other's skills because we were, this wasn't, neither of us were beginners in the wilderness. Uh, so we had complementary skills and we had an exciting time and a great trip. And we ended up the trip with this one day ice climb. And my climbing partner, Tim, was a certified lead climber. He had just finished his, his course somewhere that summer or probably the, the winter before now that I think about it. He couldn't do it in the summertime. Um, but he had just completed his course and this was his first climb solo as a certified leader, he had all the gear. I did not. I had to borrow and rent whatever I could find. And I came up short with my gear. I had an ice ax with a longer handle and an ice hammer, which was not really supposed to be used for climbing. It's used for chipping ice and unscrewing uh, in and unscrewing 
ice screws. So you set yeah. these ice screws in the ice and then you attach a carabiner mm -hmm. and the rope to that. So I talked to Tim into allowing me to do this climb. I remember walking down the street in Bozeman, Montana and, and talk, just like earnestly wanting to make this climb. And he's like, I don't know, man, it's not the right gear. And, and but he really wanted to do it. So he let me talk him into it, that I really was the motivator. On the climb itself, this lack of correct gear impacted our ascent in two ways. It, the length of my stride, like if you're walking and, and you you have a stride and ice climbers have a one foot extension on the length of their arm, that's kind of the stride of it. But on my right hand, I didn't have that stride. I had a one foot shorter mm -hmm. on the right side than the left side, which meant that my ascent was a one foot short per uh, ascent for, per moving up the mountain, which slowed me down significantly. And the second thing that happened was, is that the ice axe can be set in the ice. You can open your hand and rest on a strap um, and re re relieve the your forearm. But in the hammer, you set that thing in, you can't let go of it because the handle's so short. And it has a strap on it, but on the very bottom. So I had to grip this thing, which meant my forearms burned out. So my forearms Thanks. burned out because you have to rest. That's like the part of the deal. You set this thing in, you have to rest. Um, but I couldn't rest. So my climb was significantly slower than Tim's. And he was always like, hurry up, but I'm going as fast as I can. And all of the other climbers, because there were other teams on the ice on this, it's a world famous climb on the Icefields Parkway called Lower Weeping Wall. People come in from everywhere to climb this in, in the summer too, because it's also a rock wall. In the winter, it's weeping ice. So by the time we were hours from the top of the climb, we already knew that we were in a dangerous situation. And I should say that unlike backpacking or hiking, when it starts to, the weather turns against you, it gets cold or it's raining, you can turn mm. down and walk down the trail you came up. But that's not true in rock climbing and, and ice climbing. You have to follow the route and oh. you can't just descend from where you are. There's, it's part of the sport it's not like a, it's not like a rule of the sport it's a necessar necessary thing like in order for your bicycle to work you have to have wheels no wheels no bicycle the same thing mm. with this you have to go up you have to go down you got to follow the route so we couldn't just turn around and go down so by the time we reached the top of the climb this was late in the, in the afternoon this was march so the sun's going down early anyway and there are huge mountains so it goes down sooner behind the mountains the temperature dropped about 30 degrees as soon as the sun went behind the mountain. Mm -hmm. And the immediately hypothermia began within Gosh. less than a minute. Wow. So we were sweating. It's a hot sport um, yeah. because you're, you're, you know, it's athletic and there's yeah. ice falling down your back. And so we were wet and the cold temperature drop and the wet caused us to begin with violent shivers. And the hypo hypothermia got worse all the way through the night advancing constantly, uh, stealing our reason, making it difficult to move our muscles, uh, mm. making it difficult to concentrate. Uh, my eyes, I felt the cold on the back side of my eyes, on the inside wow. of oh, my head. Oh, my God, Lord. And oh, my gosh. It, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And we were terrified. I was terrified out of my mind. But I was, um, and Tim was like this too, super level-headed in dangerous situations. Wow. Mm. So what we learned about each other the week before is we're each super head level, level headed level-headed in dangerous situations, Yeesh. which meant we totally trusted each other. But we we, we weren't level-headed because we were Vulcans and we didn't feel this thing. <laughs> we were level-headed because we took the... <laughs> we took the... Uh, <laughs> we took the fear, we compartmentalized it. And so we shoved it off to the side, which which took mental energy. So it wasn't mm -hmm. just locked in a room and I forgot about it. I was like keeping it Eesh. away over here. So but I imagine that's what you have to do in a situation like mm -hmm. that, huh, Peter? And I start yeah. praying, Peter. Well, we were praying, but you know, no one was coming to rescue us. Wow. We were, mm -hmm. we were in the middle, middle of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll leave out some of the details about signing into the warden, the warden's log and um, that sort of stuff. So we weren't, it wasn't, we weren't unknown that we weren't there, but yeah, no one okay. was going to come and rescue us. Mm -hmm. um, the warden showed up in the middle of the night across the street, but he didn't come up to rescue us. He, he watched us until we got to the last rappel, at which point he drove away, drove away, at which point the rope got stuck 
Oh, and gosh. that's it's so w- when he showed up at the bottom of the second <laughs> rappel because we had signed into the log, he came looking for us. So, uh, we had a guardian angel, all right, sort of. Mm. He heartened us, we made us feel better that he was there. Uh, but by the time we reached the lat, that like I said, the last top of the last rappel, mm. sometime before morning, dawn, I don't really know, he just drove away because we only had we were only 100 150 feet up and the safest spot on the entire climb and the rope jammed and i couldn't get it free and then we were totally stuck because he was not coming back to rescue us wow so he saw he saw you guys didn't need help he saw you guys were we're were fine you know we we really knew i mean other than my mistake okay um we actually knew what we were doing um yeah I'd, i'd spent a lot of time around ropes and rock so I, I was a, a muck. I was I'm a, in my youth. I was a mountain goat. I don't know if you. My my. I was a, I was Pan. Those are my horns. Um, and my oh last my name gosh. is Panagor. So Pan there. Um, jumping so, everywhere, huh? Jumping everywhere. That's right. And I oh played a flute gosh. for a while too. Uh, okay. uh, anyway, uh, but my legs weren't hairy ever. Um, so I like to make fun of this for myself because for the first longest time of my life when I ever told this story I cried every single time mm-hmm. because I was so terrified I went I went back in 2016 um, in order to face my trauma it, and I was the the trauma of the night was so terrible that it left me uh, broken for a long time mm-hmm. um, even though the near-death yeah. experience healed me my I, my psyche oh, was no. yeah you know deep trauma yeah. Yeah. So we we make it across the mountain through the night with a lot of trouble, uh, advancing hypothermia, no food, water through because we're on ice we can suck on the water and you know mm-hmm. icicles and that kind of thing, and and always controlling our fear and the temperature kept dropping all night long. So as oh. the temperature <laughs> dropped, we got yeah. colder, which meant we had to continue moving because the only thing that was keeping us warm was our physical Visible energy. Movement. Yeah. But we didn't have any food to fuel ourselves, so we're mm. we're we and, and we've got hypothermia pressing on us because uh, hypothermia puts you to sleep, uh, oh, wow. and so we're, we got this we got this whole a bunch of pressures pushing on us as we're trying to make this traverse in the dark, in the mm-hmm. cold with a cliff, and uh, on sometimes on ice and sometimes on rock with metal crampons on our feet. Oh, wow. oh gosh and you know peter before you you continue people many people say i wish i had a near that experience and all of us look at the trauma that we all had to go through so people no, ask i don't recommend the <laughs> there's so much trauma and yeah like even mm-hmm. though it can change completely your life it also your psyche and everything else get completely transformed <laughs> yeah. and what you, you did need- peter i did it too every year i'm going to the place i drown so i go to the same place that i drown all the time to say thank you to god you know and just to revive that moment right there to give another chance for my life every time nice. because yeah. it, it helped me i don't know how but i know that is i feel peace when i go to that place where i drown so yeah i, I do, understand I perfectly know. the way that you go there too to find yeah. that you know? I went to find peace. Yes, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No recommend. Yeah. And after I went, um, I I had help from some Native American elders who uh, taught me how to call my soul back. Mm-hmm. And I did. And my experience of the location of my trauma transformed me. Uh, mm-hmm. And the do- the doorway. So there was always this lingering that's the place where all the darkness of the world began for me because when i came back i came back into this this world but it was an ent- it was an a, a, an entry re-entry into such a lower level of density uh filled mm-hmm. with suffering and pain yeah. that it was tr- that alone was traumatic to me Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All like, of, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to be here didn't want to come back you know last year i finally for the first time in all my years of being in grid i was able to get into uh, experience very cold water i could not touch it because if i touch cold water because i drown in cold water it would almost like burn my skin like like visible 
because the trauma was such. And last year, for the first time, I was able to go into 50 degree uh, wow. Fahrenheit water. And and the place I, I fell was between 30 and 40. So I have not reached that low temperature, but I was able to do it for the first time and realize. Oh, yeah, you did it. Can do it. <laughs> I can be in cold water and survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Peter, just please keep telling us Tell the story. Us, <laughs> this is just like, what, yeah, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. next? Yes. Um, I. Or oh, okay, so we make the final rappel mm -hmm. and we're down on this ledge and it's the size of a couple of kitchen tables and the wall is in front of this. The, the, we're off the ice, we're on rock and there's a rock wall. It's, you know, it's hard. We're only a, at this point, a hundred, 150 feet up. It's a 10,000 foot mountain. So we're Eesh. at the bottom of this mountain. Um, oh my gosh. And we'd only gone up five or 600 feet. It, we weren't very high up comparatively, but high enough and so for the first time in the night we were safe from falling because there were there was there were attachments to the mountain we could clip into these rings they were attached to the mountain clip into our harnesses so we weren't gonna fall so mm -hmm. tim was to my left i was to the right we waved goodbye to the warden mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. i i tied I, I tied the rope i had the rope it's double rope I tied the rope to my harness. I took the other end of the rope and I tossed it out around this curve. So the mountain made this angle and, mm -hmm. and we had just rappelled down this craggy face in the shadow. The moon was mm -hmm. up, uh, so, but it was still shadowy. And I threw the rope around the corner and I pulled it and it jammed. I didn't pull it a couple of inches and, and somewhere up around the corner, it, the rope had lain between two rocks or, mm -hmm. or a ledge and two pointy things. And it, I couldn't pull it. It was done. I And the more I pulled it, the tighter it got. The tighter mm. it got, the less likely it was I was going to be able to get it free. I tried flipping the line like you do, you know, to get the waveform going. Mm. And, but it, but the corner blocked the wave. And so I couldn't flip it, the lift, flip and lift. Mm. Um, and now we knew that we were in really deep trouble oh, because wow. the yeah. warden was gone. We have no rope. I can't, you can't, I couldn't ascend in the dark up the rock face. I'm frozen. My feet have no feeling. Anymore. My cold, cold is like fire. When it mm. gets, we get really cold. It's like sticking your hand in red hot coals. Mm -hmm. And and my feet had gone from red hot coal to no feeling. Wow. Nothing. And so, you know, clumpy, clumpy, clump. Uh, where's my foot going? Cause I can't feel it anymore. Wow. Um, and my hands, I had blisters on my blisters on my fingers. I had blisters on my fingers and um, frostbite on my face. And um, I cannot imagine that. And I, I was twenty one years old. I had just turned twenty one, and I surrendered. I, I gave up, mm -hmm. and when I gave up, this peace settled on me and a piece of acceptance of my circumstance mm. and, and as this happened i got hot all of the, i felt like all of the blood rushed from my extremities to my core and i remember i remember thinking i don't really need my hands i can oh. i need my heart and my lungs and my brain to live so i was mm -hmm. I, I felt oh good my body's taking care of me but i got so hot which is what happens to hypothermic people, I unzipped my coat and I opened it up because I was too hot. And of course, letting all this heat escape and letting the cold come in. And my, my Tim, who was in his own world over there dealing with his own stuff, mm -hmm. uh, scolded me, tried to get me to zip my coat up and I basically flipped him off. Oh, wow. And mm. I started thinking about God. I, I was raised Roman Catholic and Greek Orthodox, but as a kid, I'd had mystical experiences mm -hmm. as a child. And right through, right through college, right through the year before, I'd had these other experiences that made me familiar with my angelic being. My, this, and so I, st and, I and with God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I started thinking about God and I started thinking about my parents and my sister had this is the broken thing in my family. My sister had run away when I was 14. From our point of view, she vanished and was a long, terrible saga of um, my how it impacted my parents in a deeply negative mm. way and us as well and lots of other people. 
So that's why I wasn't there, but I was thinking, you know, and, and it's like a, I describe, I describe this kind of estrangement as a, it's a death. Only the person doesn't die. They're mm -hmm. just gone. And the, and the gaping wound in your forearm never heals. It stays mm -hmm. open. There's no scar that forms and infection can get in and infection does get in. And, mm -hmm. and so there was this ongoing low grade fever in my family that was destructive for us. And I love everybody mm -hmm. in my family that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always have, but I had, I, I couldn't be there, but I didn't want to hurt my parents. And I knew that I was going to die here. And now they were going to lose a child, another child. Mm -hmm. And I could see inside my imagination, what kind of destruction that was going to cause them. Oh no, I kind of. And yeah. I, but I, there's nothing I could do about it. Yep. So I wasn't, I wasn't, it was funny. I was sad about it, but I wasn't, I, I, I couldn't stop it. Hmm. So I began to fall asleep and I would, I, my, my eyes would close like a curtain drop and I'd collapse and smack my head, my helmeted head on the rock and wake back up and stand back and, and stand back up and repeat this process. Mm -hmm. And then I stood up and and Tim is totally in his old world over there. We're not really paying attention to each other. I'm just, and I'm still pulling mm -hmm. on the rope. I stand back up to pull on the rope because what do I got to lose? I got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. I've already lost everything. So mm -hmm. I stand back up to pull on the rope. And as I stand up, my peripheral vision becomes this big black circle. Oh, and it's, oh. It's, you seen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's this big black circle around my peripheral and it starts to collapse like this. And as it collapses, oh, wow. I'm like looking around and it's getting smaller and I'm completely confused. I'm like, what is this? What thing? is going on? Yeah. And I was, so I was befuddled. And, and then as it started to go down to nothing, I start, I thought to myself, am I falling asleep? This is so weird. I've never fallen asleep like this. Even the curtain drop form of sleeping, you know, from if you've ever fallen asleep, uh, from extreme exhaustion it's mm. just you know the brain shuts off but this time it wasn't and as it closed i thought is this sleep and and when it shut i woke up and i woke up in a way i'd never wake, woken up before i was oh i was in kind of in front of my physical body and sure. i was a, a a self but i had a, a shape and a bit of a darkness to me i couldn't see myself because i was looking in front of me wondering where the mountain had gone and where oh, wow. my pain had gone and why i was awake and in front of me was this vast expanse of like a velvet darkness uh, that mm -hmm. was galactic size oh, and wow. it was completely dark and i was not scared i was mm. just confused what is going on here and way far in the distance this pinprick of light appeared and rushed toward me in uh, great rapidity ra rapidity way f of this super far distance impossible to cover as fast as it did and as it came to me it expanded filling the space with light and communicated to me telepathically you're coming with me and i oh. said telepathically <laughs> not going anywhere don't know what's going on i'm gonna stay right where i am for a minute thank you very much and i, and I oh my sort of gosh. i put up my willpower my strength mm -hmm. that i had been that had caused me survival so i had a, i had a, a great amount of willpower suddenly and it was nothing it was wow. it was uh celluloid uh and and, and it just grabbed me right out and and put me inside itself and carried me away and as i was being carried away there was a severing from my body in all of my earlier previous all of my previous mystical experiences there was always a connection to my physical body every mm -hmm. time i was out of it and i didn't it wasn't astral projecting i was taken out of it by this angelic being and oh, always wow. there was this cable connection but this thing it was severed and mm -hmm. and um, oh wow and my shape of my body i had a body shape like humanoid but mm -hmm. i was i was illumination itself i was made of mm -hmm. light and no mm -hmm. molecules and no mm -hmm. eyeballs, no hair, no ears, yes, nothing. Yes, yes, yes. But I was inside this orb of consciousness that I, in which I had no agency, I had no power, I had no control. I, but I was content because it was speaking to me the whole time, and it was it was um, entangled with the infinite, and it was speaking on behalf of the infinite. Uh, comfort 
and and mm. power, hyper mm. and mega power and um, me- mm. meta intelligence and and uh, uh, control. I was in wow. control, and I could see myself inside the angelic being from a super positioned place where I was an another eye. I was like the eye of God seeing myself inside this angelic being traveling up. And I could see this from inside my light body. But when I looked with my light body, I couldn't see the eyeball. And so wow. inside of me, I had these two, I had simultaneous uh, perceptions of, of consciousness from inside That's incredible. and mm-hmm. outside. And so it carried me back up the trajectory it had come down mm-hmm. and we got to the edge of it and it popped open or, or, or expanded or I popped out or something. I don't, not really, this is part of my NDE that's not clear to me. And maybe mm-hmm. this is your experience too, is that it NDE is like this gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. But there was an ocean of information on the other side and I've come back with a, a trickling stream, but the stream is still flowing. And so there's more information that keeps coming the more I widen the stream path Mm -hmm. with my practices. Um, And so I I popped into this universe-sized darkness, but this darkness was paradoxically, and this is all metaphor, okay, everybody, this is this is all conceptualizations to try to convey the ineffable, the things that cannot be expressed. And so there is this this vast universe size womb of God that I'm mm-hmm. inside of and it's, and it's illuminated and it's dark. And the darkness wow. itself carries a type of illumination that, because I can see in this space, uh, this, I can see like the James Webb telescope uh, all the way to the beginning of the, of the universe. But on the edge of this unit, this womb that I'm inside of, there was this mm-hmm. deep darkness that I couldn't see into. And I knew was infinity. And inside of infinity, this 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 heaven I was in was a a form of limitation Mm -hmm. from this infinite, and I was absolutely alone, and one hundred percent content. I my my form had inflated. Now I was a large orb of consciousness where my 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 thinking wasn't impeded by my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, I my seeing was my form, my being was my form, my knowledge was my form. There was no separation like fingertip over here and earlobe over here. There was only this unitive state of energy where yeah. I understood my original self. This was always me. This has always been me. And so I had this immense contentment and and no more pain. All of my yeah. suffering. Yeah was mm-hmm. gone mm-hmm. yeah this is so majestic so do you majestic. thought in that moment you were dying or what do you think that you want to come back you didn't tell anything about it i was just no, letting go i, I was, was i was just oh this is me okay this is uh, this is who i am this is who i've always been why did i ever think that i was that that rental what? unit <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is incredible i love it yeah and, and, and like you say Peter, is like i have had experiences I mean, the, the near this, but also experiences where I have become the witness of the mind and the mind. I I have the compassion to see, to look at the mind and the mind is like, how am I going to explain this? It's like, how am I going? So when you say I'm using just analogies, I'm using just the words you can use to describe something that doesn't have description. It's like, but you're doing an incredible job, Peter. Because well, it's, it's because it's, it has no form. Beyond it's how you explain the no form, the no sound, the all different colors, textures, movements. Um, how how do we explain all these? <laughs> energy, yeah. ball of energy, energy, which Spend is also it. a metaphor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, all of it. All of it. Wow. So I'm this ball of energy. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, and I know myself as myself. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as I'm in this vastness by myself. Uh, the, it, I'm, I see the deep darkness, the greater darkness, mm-hmm. rip open, and as it rips open, this light mm-hmm. pours out, and it's. I, I like to describe it like a gigantic waterfall. And this gigantic oh, wow. waterfall is made of white light, and mm-hmm. simultaneously, 
one single white light, but simultaneously, yeah. it's also all of the colors of all of the stars in the sky that I saw that night and all of the electromagnetic spectrum, which I can now see, and so much more. And all yeah. of these are like pixelated packets of, of, of light. And, and wow. they were all like a like a fish scale oily fish scale shimmering but it, it wasn't flipping from zero to one like in a computer zero to one right. zero one zero zero um you know uh, zero one zero one zero one uh it was it was flipping it was flipping um i know how do i say this uh there, in quantum physics when a something when an object is superpositioned it's both mm -hmm. zero and one and zero and one at the same time and mm -hmm. that's the it's space like entanglement it was. yeah yep. yes it was it was all of them mm -hmm. and one color and white simultaneously mm -hmm. see yeah 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 and most beautiful most attractive most desirous love pouring from it and and as i when i saw it i wanted it and as i wanted it my wanting was my action and my and it just yes. wanted, i moved toward it without effort yes. no effort and mm -hmm. I, and i was i was also i should say i was uh satiated i needed nothing more i wasn't thirsty mm -hmm. i wasn't hungry wasn't sleepy none of those things existed because i didn't have a body um, mm -hmm. um and so i'm i'm moving toward this light which is moving toward me and i come right up to the edge of it and at the edge of it it has three structures to it it has a solidity it's mm -hmm. I, I, I it has a translucency like i can mm -hmm. see into the depth of it and yeah. it's it's all of this light flowing and yeah. then i can see through it there's like a tunnel into the greater darkness mm -hmm. and um you're scared I, this moment or not I'm in love. Love. I'm in love. <laughs> love, love. I love that. And, oh, and this is great. So I, 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 I reach toward it because I want it to touch it with my soul self, my energy self. And as I touch it, it tears me open and flows oh, inside wow. me as it pulls me inside itself. And so now I become all these things, timelessness, how all these things happen at once. My self inside inflates. And as I'm inflated, I hear the voice, the soundless voice, because there was a voice talking to me, but there was no sound and there was no language. So this voice is speaking to me and I, and I hear this voice uh, speaking to me, calling my soul self into being. Mm. Na by yeah. name, like naming me, and not like like mm. when I named my son or my daughter. You shall be called, and then it was done. You know, it's like always being called into being. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eternally, and mm -hmm. it's not Peter that's being called into being. It's 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 a, a word that I can't say that is mm -hmm. still being spoken inside of me, mm -hmm. and it, and I could see. Um, my soul self had inhabited this recent person. And so I, I went through this series of different experiences of levels of my own beingness. And so oh, at, at, at this point, I, I understand that I'm creature made by creator, but not Peter. My creatureliness um, is, is my soul self. And my soul self is everlasting, always being called into being, always everlasting. And while that's going on, my physical, my, my, my conscious self, my consciousness mm -hmm. sort of reshapes into a humanoid shape and I'm made of illumination. And in front of me, there is, cause now there's a front of me, mm -hmm. in front of me is the eye of God. There's this yeah. huge mm -hmm. eye that is beaming light from the darkness. It's setting on the edge of the darkness and it's beaming light at me and my self by the light of my own being is the light that's emanating from this illumination mm -hmm. and it's wow. seeing me it's wow. seeing all of my human life that i had just lived and it is 99.9 percent .9 illumination and because it is loving me it, it, it is wow. me and lives in me through my whole experience of mm -hmm. my lifetime but there's these dark places of my life 
Mm. And these dark places of my life become illuminated. Uh, the, the exterior of them become illuminated. Uh, it's sort of in relief. I see the darkness mm -hmm. uh, of all the things that I had done to people that I hid away, you know, yeah. don't show anybody. And the things I hid from myself and they all coalesced mm -hmm. into one mass. And this mass in comparison to my illuminated body, which is being spoken to, I've, I've always experienced everything you've experienced. I'm with you all the time. I'm not like with you with a pet, with, with a keyboard writing down uh, what your experience in the, in the, in the heavenly scrolls. I am you experiencing your life with you. And there, but the parts of me where I was most selfish there, I tried to hide because the darkness in contrast was, uh, illuminated my shame. And as I was ashamed for the divine to see this, and let me say that the divine had no gender and no religion yeah. and no <laughs> name and nothing, anything human can see. Yeah, of. yeah. But as I tried to hide this darkness, mm -hmm. I it 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 dropped me inside of it. Mm. And so I'm my consciousness went into all of my own darkness. And, and it's of, what we we know as as the shadow, Peter. You think is like what we describe as as our could our be shadow. the shadow. I I yeah, mm -hmm. shadow. The uh, it's my. It turned out to be my selfishness, mm -hmm. uh, and the 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 parts of me that I where I intentionally hurt others mm -hmm. with um, exactitude. Yeah. And so I went through this experience where I was two people at once. I was me, always me, experiencing all of the pain that I gave away in my lifetime in a chronological sequence to every single person. And all of my, inside of me, all of my jealousies and angers and cruelties and hurts that I was, you know, using as weapons against everybody else, anger. Mm -hmm. And, and I re-experienced them as I had had them when I was, going through them the first time and then i was all these other people and all these other people my sisters my brother my parents my mm -hmm. friends every single person that i hurt in this this sequence i was inside of them experiencing all of their their brain chemistry and emotional reactions to the thing i was doing to them so i felt mm -hmm. all of their pain from their perspective mm -hmm. and i i felt their pain from their perspective because the divine just isn't me it's everyone and so yes. it was showing me from their interior point of view what it knew and was showing me my shadow. And as mm -hmm. I went through this experience, uh, the pain that I gave away from my little human point of view turned out to be massive in terms of the size of the pain that they received, the, it disproportional. And all of that pain accrued to me. Mm -hmm. and And so I went into this state of comparison where i saw my selfishness in comparison to this infinite perfection this unlimited beauty that uh, and goodness um wherein i judged myself as less than and and in a christian word unworthy of the of the presence of the mercy of the divine who mm -hmm. was not only showing me myself also showed me my radical equality to every human being in that same mm -hmm. scale so the same metric and mm -hmm. and because the metric is infinity versus limitedness we're all the same we're on the same plane mm -hmm. and and so there was no and there was no one to blame for mm -hmm. our wounding of others because the whole i saw the the whole structure of the universe i i uh, understood how everything was made and everything there is is limited in comparison to the unlimited and it's all sort of programmed into this the universe we live in and it's not my fault but they're choices that i made so yes, it's, not, it's not my yeah. fault because i'm structured this way but i made these choices it's a free way. And, uh, that's, that's yeah and uh, what i was thinking is like uh is not judgment but taking responsibility for the Showed, choices that it was shown uh, that i had to take responsibility yep. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow and, this is and incredible. i did and I, I did i took i took my responsibility and and i did so with uh, shame and shame that i had so much light and had 
squandered it. Um, mm-hmm. And I wasn't a terrible person, you know, mm-hmm. getting some trouble when yeah. I was a kid, getting some trouble here and there, but nothing serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but the voice was speaking to me continually, love. I love you. I have always loved you. I have loved you and everything, every moment of your life, every single breath you have taken, I've been there making you from myself, my own beloved self. And I, I love you. I love you. I love you. Here is mercy. Here's forgiveness. Here's mercy. Mm, Welcome. Compassion. Yeah. Compassion. Welcome. What do you feel family. in that moment when you hear all that? I paid attention. It was yeah. like a, it was like a, suddenly I could hear, I could hear the, the, the music of the spheres, the, the, the mm. angel of choir of angels calling my name. And I, no, and, and I swooned so and I, 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 all of my, attachments all of my karmic attachments all of my sins they all evaporated like uh again star trek uh a phaser set on on <laughs> molecular destructuring you know where the yeah, object yeah. totally disappears um that's what happened to there was no scar left from any of my wounds because wow. there was never a wound in the first place oh yeah 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 so, the, the, it's, it's all all perception of that wound, but at the, at the same time, we need to have the perception of a wound to be able to mm. know the opposite of it. It's like what give us the contrast to realize I'm not this. Without this other thing, I cannot know what I am not or what I am. Yeah, when I lost it, I found myself. Mm. Yes. Um, and, yes. And here in this life, I find that my suffering uh, opens i read this quote this morning from a, a sufi um blanking on his name right now brought brought sufism to europe in the united states in the 1900s and he, he said that the god uh wounds your heart again and again and again until your heart stays open mm-hmm. okay. and 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 so once i i went through this self-imposed wounding where i had mm-hmm. caused all this pain and wounded myself when the light became uh, evident to me like a tidal wave like there was so much i say you know god's calling me and saying i love you and mercy and welcome but it's not like these skinny little words it's like it's like Huge. a meteorite hits the ocean and yeah. it's you know, like a 300 tsunami. foot wall of light pouring down yeah oh my god it self evident and impossible to resist it was just impossible mm-hmm. to resist um, and so I, it wasn't just swooning. It was like getting swept away and uplifted and inflated. And, and as I accepted this, it, uh-huh. it inflated me like a dirigible, like, and yeah. I became enormous with, filled with truth, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, uh, love, joy, bliss, peace, beauty, awe, adoration, gratitude, compassion, all of these things that in our our language of spirituality are these separate things they're all mm-hmm. one thing and mm-hmm. uh, and i inflated to this point at which i thought that if i inflated any more and i was in i was in the state of deep adoration Please. love love <laughs> um, and <laughs> and like amazing. any more of it pouring into me i felt I like i would have i would have enfolded back into the darkness itself and ceased to be and this this being that i was wasn't yeah. peter at all there was no peterness oh whatsoever. yeah yeah I know in the midst mean. of this inflation i i become another substance and i become like an individuated photon and mm-hmm. i'm like a a photon in the darkness mm-hmm. and i'm 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 entangled mm-hmm. with this field of photons that is, uh, you know, a, a hundred bazillion quadrillion light years deep, I- infinitely deep and wide and yeah. tall. Yeah, oh and my God. And all of these photons are mm-hmm. all superpositioned together. It's the many and they're all one. And wow. so mm-hmm. there, and, and I am, I am one of these. Mm-hmm. I am part of this, but I'm also somehow outside of it, but I am also totally connected to it. And so mm-hmm. this this self of me this core of my being uh-huh. is the is the center of the center of myself wow. and uh, my and it and and it it preceded 
precedes the calling into being of my soul self. So I see below me this soul self that's being called by name into being. And, and, and my soul self has this elongated life that, that comes out of it, begins at the darkness and as it's being always called into being. And, it, and I have this long, 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 long tail of my life. And, and inside of it are all of the lives I had lived. Many lives. Yeah, and I always say, Peter, that we're just a parenthesis in the eternity that we are. <laughs> we are. A little parenthesis. And, wow. and and I and they're all happening simultaneously. So there's a chronology to them, but they are they are all separate little worlds, separate little lives I had, and yeah. I'm alive in all of them. Oh, and wow. what's alive in all of them is my oversoul, but my right. oversoul, they're inside my oversoul, but my oversoul, it's not them. They're like olives in a loaf of bread. Um, mm -hmm. You love to find the olives in the loaf of bread, but yes. they're olives in the loaf of bread. They're not the bread yep. itself. And the bread is ginormous. And all of these little tiny worlds I live inside of, and I want to see inside of them. So I'm this little photonic self. I see this down below me. I'm like, hey, I want to check it out. And and I'm carried down and I'm entered into two lives. And mm -hmm. in one life, I was a human being. And it was a long time ago. I was on Earth. And I and I could see I, I was when I entered this body, I was looking at his feet. And they were on a dusty mm -hmm. road with sandals and, and it, like dirty mm -hmm. feet and hairy legs and a, like a, a cloth covering down to my knees, just below my knees. And I looked up and there were, there were people walking on this road. It's a pretty wide road. Oh, yeah. There's like pulling carts and there's donkeys and a low house and a palm tree and people selling stuff. It's like a thoroughfare. And I'm walking with wow. a bunch of guys and, and these guys are all talking in this language that I understood when I was there. Cause I was like walking into this guy and yeah, and they're we're having a spiritual conversation and they ask me my opinion and I'm kind of in the front of them and I turn to to answer because I understand them and I look at the I see some of their faces and as I'm about to speak I'm pulled out oh. and then I'm oh. shoved into further back in the timeline into a little tiny creature that I think was some kind of lizard and I think mm. it was on earth but I don't know for sure because my, I had a little teeny tiny brain uh -huh. and I could <laughs> see um, out at my my the receptors in my eyes created a different world, which is I don't why well, I don't know where I was because nothing looked the same as Earth. The, but I had awesome. this this yeah. distinct feeling I was hiding from a predator, so I'm kind of like oh. in a shadow, staying still. And then I was pulled oh. out of that area. Huh? Um, I wasn't scared. I had this sort of well, I had a stillness. There was a stillness to myself, like. I was observing everything. Yeah, yeah I, I was yeah. going to say that. Like, I, 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 it's like feeling that you're just like an observer. Yeah, I, I was. Like, I uh, it's I, like I, the movie Lucy. Have you ever seen the movie Lucy when she sit down on the, on, the on a chair and the whole world on different timelines? Oh, that Lucy. Yes, her. yes, yes. I, I'm thinking Lucille Ball. I'm no, like, no, no, no. totally different movie. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Like when she yeah, down, yeah, yeah. Timelines pass in front of her. Yeah, kind of like that. That's a good okay. analogy. Yes. Um, that's a great film too. I've watched that a bunch. That's really fun. That, that was yeah. That's good. That's good. Amazing. That awesome. one is so good. Uh, and the weird one of the weird parts of this is that the life I had just left mm -hmm. was still alive, like all the other ones that I had already died in. Oh, wow. So there was this this essence of timelessness for all of these lives, and I don't I don't understand how that works, but that's what happened and. And then I'm reduced again to sort of a, a smaller self mm -hmm. and I'm in the darkness and the voice is saying, it's time for you to come home. Mm -hmm. And I say, I remember my, I remember my parents and I say, well, what about my folks? Mm -hmm. And, and as I think about this, as I, I'm swept across this womb again to oh, this Lord. edge where um the 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 energy of heaven becomes the matter of the universe okay and mm -hmm. so this little part of me sticks out like in i'm this part of me is in the universe the rest of me is still inside heaven in the presence of the divine and i'm and i'm getting shown around that. this way and i'm like 
turn this way and I see all of our universe, I see all of our galaxies and I'm in, I'm in a space where it kind of in between gal galaxies. So I'm in a great darkness, a lot of space. There's a lot of space in space and I'm in the middle of some of that space, but I can see all of these galaxies. And, and as my, as I'm shown, my vision sort of focuses, I'm, I'm not even controlling my vision. Okay. Not just the, the turn of my appear where I'm looking. It's like the whole thing's under its control. And so I, my vision is focused in, and I see the beginning of our universe and it's, mm. it's sort of the big bang, but it's also sort of always now wow. it's more always yeah. now than it is oh, anything mm -hmm. else. And out of this mm -hmm. darkness, this greater darkness that I still can't see into, but I know is infinity. Mm -hmm. The light is pouring out and this light becomes um, visible to me and then matter encrusts around it. And the universe is created as this wave of, it's not one thin wave of light. It's like this huge net set of light that is all encrusted with the structure of our universe. And, and, in the, and I can see then that inside all of the matter and energy of our universe, the divine light itself is the substrata of all that there is. Oh, yeah, and, yes, yes, yes. And as I see that, I see all of these other universes popping out of the greater darkness and all of that immensity because the sides of our universe, all these other universes, and they just keep popping out and the, and the infinite darkness itself and the heaven I'm inside of all of it as one entity aims all of the love that makes all of this creation exist and aims it like a big focal point on me with a, with a, with a f magnifying glass. And all of this love is focused entirely on me, the most unconditional, infinite love that I cannot, which is why I'm such, I, I, I live the way I live now is yeah. because this wow. love was so immense that it became my most beloved. And it said to me without language, you are you are my beloved and all mm. of my love is focused in you and all is well all has been well and all will be well because mm -hmm. i am everything there is and as i am i'm absorbed in this this overwhelming uh, great love my attention is shifted to our galaxy and to our planet and the sun and i see earth are you know and in in going around the sun only it's not moving very fast and there's darkness on one side and there's light on the other and i can see seven billion people everybody doing everything all at once everything wow. that you everything human and it's like live action with uh seven billion screens but it's all on it's all in right contained i can One see instant. everything and inside of every single human heart is this tiny fleck of golden light that is the structure mm -hmm. of all that there is and the voice s says to me um they are my beloved too oh wow. just as you and there's this this foam that covers the earth that's that they can't see through. And so nobody sees this intensity of this light that is the very structure of everything there is, that is the them themselves. And the voice says to me that nothing and no one is ever lost because I am the love that loves itself. And my love, I love myself, I love all there is. And everything manifested becomes unmanifested back and folds into me. Everything mm -hmm. is is me. And so then it shows me my parents' face. Like it's like this big huge drama to set up this next scene. And my parents pop up and mom and dad and mom and dad. And it's not just their faces, it's their entire lives of suffering from when my sister oh, left to yeah. when they die. And oh, wow. and there's A and B. And in A, I'm not with them. And the suffering is ginormous Enormous. yeah and in B, wow. there's still a lot of suffering but it's so much smaller there's no destruction mm -hmm. a, a, a level a was just like nuclear destruction of their lives mm -hmm. and, so and it you shows chose how to we just laugh love love choosing mm -hmm. love <laughs> choosing well that's what happened I, I and it showed me my it showed me their deaths not their, not how they died, but okay. after they showed me their afterlife, and their afterlife was just like me, and it showed me the length of my human life was that fast, mm -hmm. and that their lives mm -hmm. were going to be that fast, Blink and that if eye. I stayed or I went, it would make no difference eternally. Wow! But I could still see their suffering, and I because I understood the length of my life was a snap of a finger, I I. 
I thought to myself, well, I can go back. It won't be anything to me, you know? Yeah. Uh, you so know, I, it's like in, in the relative perception of things, it's like, it's so eternal, but in the absolute perception, it's like nothing. But at the same time, you're playing both. So it's like, how can I make them, um, how can I seize that suffering if I have the power to do it? That's exactly, exactly what it was. And in that moment yeah. you came back? No. Peter? No? Oh, no. Okay. Um, and so the voice keeps saying to me, mm -hmm. welcome, come home, you know? All's okay. good. It's totally cool. They'll be here in a minute. Just wait. And um, I say, but what Ingrid said, I say, but I could relieve their suffering. Okay. So if I go back and I come back here, and the divine said, yeah, yeah, you come back to bliss. You come back to paradise. Mm -hmm. You come back to me. Yeah. Um, I say, well, then I choose to live my life. And it says, you won't live your life and throws me out like a baseball. And wow. uh, as I as I'm being thrown out or, or like or like the time I got thrown out of. Well, I won't even tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, Peter, yeah, it's in, like in, in my last near that experience when I said, keep me where I can serve God the most. So here. it's like at the end when we're not in judgment, we pick yeah. what is of love, what is, I we pick I what is of the light. I believe that that's where we went through these stories with this that happened to us because we need to share that love that Peter went there. The same love that I saw when I went there, the same love that you saw when you went there. So we're messengers of love of to this dimension, and we need to spread the love that we saw there in this dimension. Yeah. Amen to that. Okay, is this show over now? Yeah, we're I'm out no, to no, be no, over. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding because you're like... <laughs> no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, we're about, but... No, no, go but, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but we have to 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 answer a question here. We, we have a, a question from Ned uh, that is Ned. asking... Yeah, thank you for being here, Ned. He's asking if do you if you heard the um the, uh, sound um, when the um when uh, you were not out. in language, I guess. No, uh, there was no mm -hmm. language there. There was there is a a, a a a vibration of the presence of the beauty of God that it supersedes anything that I can say. That was the the hum of everything. So how about if I say yes and no? Just. Uh, uh, no, because there was no sound, but yes, because everything was made of the vibration of the presence of the divine and nothing was not. Um, yeah. So I, on my way out, I, I was um, back inside this angelic being, being uh, compressed. So I had been inflated and now I'm all of my molecules are being, being reformed and I'm, I'm becoming, I, I become an energy form first and then I become more solid. And as I'm being carried back, uh, I'm quite surprised, I might say, I saw this enormous beam of light out to, to mm -hmm. what appeared to be my, this side of me. And it was gigantic and it was white and it was contained like a laser beam. And I looked back to its origin to see whether I could see back in heaven. Cause I'm like, suddenly I'm in exile and I'm like, mama, daddy, don't leave me. And I look back oh, and gosh. there's this darkness that I can't see into and this beam of light that's going by me and the divine being that I'm encased in says to me, choose light, choose a life. And I, and I look mm -hmm. ahead of me and there are a million doors surrounding this beam of light. And the wow. beam is large in the middle and the doors are small and they extend out to a great distance and the illumination fades as it goes to the edge. And I, and I know that it wanted me to choose just the light, but I had enough as I became more dense, I had enough of my humanity returning to me that i made choices about the life that i wanted to live and i made these series of of choices about light was the first thing but then there was i wanted to i wanted to live a human life i wanted to be a human being you know and, peter many people say i don't want to go back as human i don't want to but what people don't understand is that this is not a decision of the mind it's a decision of the purpose is a decision of evolution of consciousness is a decision so you don't choose with the head at that moment you're like oh, this is what serves the greatest purpose and you're yeah. so in love 
and so open and so yeah. given that that's what you do you don't you yeah. don't think of it you just don't judge that you just you just do mm. it yeah. <laughs> and and i knew that i was messenger I knew that yeah. the, that my job, I knew I had a job in this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And so this door opened in front of me and I went down this tunnel and in this tunnel were 10,000 doors leading to all of these other lives. And so the whole field of doorways were all probabilities of lives that I would live based on the choices that I would make uh, through the doors I would travel into all these uh, and 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 the decision that i've made overall is that i'm aiming myself toward the beam of light in the middle of them whatever choice mm -hmm. i try to make i'm always mm -hmm. trying to get to there so at the end of this tunnel um i see a body on a cliff but i don't know who it is or what's going on and i see another body crunched over it uh with you know kind of grabbing me grabbing the body by the collar and shaking wow. it and and I'm, I'm i'm dispassionately observing the scene oh look at that what's going on there yeah. and and yeah. This, yeah. this angelic being pierced the chest of the lion of the one on its back and opened it and forced me in compressed me and stuffed me mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. and i was suddenly inside and i knew that i was inside a dead body i had this sense of um entrapment Mm -hmm. And inside of this, uh, this, this, because it had no, the, the only opening was this hole in this, its chest where I could see back to the angelic being who had some form to it and, and back toward the darkness of heaven. And, and, and this angelic being was illumination itself. And then this closed and I felt the brain come alive um, and turn back on and, and amazing, pain yeah. returned. Mm -hmm. suffering so it, it was suffer existential suffering of just being a human being plus mm -hmm. all the pain that the body had just like mm -hmm. like a bed of nails inside of this thing sarcophagus i was stuck inside of and the because i had been in painlessness i'd been in beauty yeah and i, yeah. And I and immediately began second guessing my choice like what did i do yes and, i know oh gosh and and the <laughs> my hearing came back yeah. And I began to understand language and I felt the body being shaken and the voice was crying, screaming in terror. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Um, if you die, I'm going to die. I'm going to, I don't want to die. And, and I opened my eyes and there's Tim like, you know, six inches from my face, shaking me, screaming tears. And, um, and he suddenly sees my eyes open and he's like, Oh, he's so surprised. I, I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. You seemed dead to me. Oh. I thought it, and he pulls me up and now he says, he's hysterically excited. And, and I'm like, what oh. is this? Where in and Peter, and, and how, how long time is, is been, like, how long do you think it, it is been since the moment because i, I know it's like wow i don't know there's timelessness on the other side so yeah. like in the chronicles yeah. of narnia when the children definitely go the, the wardrobe, other side yeah yeah so yeah but how long it like no of, of course in 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 you there's no time there or is completely different notion of time but here in the physical reality you don't know either how long i have no idea was, i didn't have yeah. a watch on Tim didn't yeah. have a watch on and neither of us really cared about the time. Yeah, we're just, that moment we're, you just yeah. we're like, you know, um, and so I'm I'm I love I'm, that analogy, Peter, that you say about the wardrobe of Narnia. <laughs> that the kids go through the <laughs> through then and there is no time, you know? Yeah, right. that's wow. just, that's the that's, way it is. It's amazing. Yeah. It is you know, like Peter, the part the part that you mentioned, the body dead, when I uh had my first near death experience and I saw my mm -hmm. body. It was that sense of, wow, that's just a shell. I, I knew the body was dead. Uh, you know what animates the body with life? Because there's still the biology and all that that makes this body have all that it has Function, intelligence yeah. and everything, but it's matter. But when I saw the eyes mm -hmm. of this body, I knew it was empty of consciousness. It was empty of life itself. And I'm like, oh. It was incredible. It's just it was that knowing that what is that animates actually this body. Peter, you was happy life. to be back. Like you knew that you was coming back to. Oh, I was right. happy to be back. I was, <laughs> really? No, it's like what 
the heck the did I do? Um, what a yeah. terrible choice. Wow. And um, and be, probably because of my angle of my dangle when I fell from the cliff, uh, when I stood back up, the rope came free on the first pull. Tim talked, was like, pull the rope, pull the rope, I pull the rope. The rope comes free. And it could have been a miracle, but I think it was the angle of my fall. And um, so we descend and we self-treat for hypothermia mm -hmm. uh, because I'm a ski patrol. I know how to do this. And my brain is back online. And so uh, we self-treat and we get our heat back up carefully in over a few mm -hmm. hours and and then we drive off and i'm an entirely different person i i can't i have i have no mm -hmm. way to talk to tim about he's an atheist uh, so religion religion in general is off the table to talk mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. uh, which was fine with me at the time and although i was a spiritual person let each person be themselves right so um there was nobody then, spiritual there that you could speak? what would you, would you say there was nobody there that was a spiritual that you can speak Peak? I was alone for the next 20 years. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is 1980 mm -hmm. and I I I became an entirely different person. Wow. Uh, and my my brain was still the same, still, you know, the same problems that my brain. Like everybody's brains get something going on in it. Yeah. And I, you know, that's yeah. still I still get that thing. And um <laughs> um it's so I'm and my my voice sounds the same. Uh -huh. So everybody and I look the same, so I appear to be uh -huh. the same to everybody everything i see is different uh, my world is entire everybody has a radiance of light to them all the trees mm -hmm. do the flowers yes. do the butterflies do there's this radiance and there's this thinness to everything there's this mm -hmm. frailty of 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 um like onion paper that mm -hmm. that yeah. is and there's illumination Real. coming behind it that makes the paper there but the paper's not really real but everybody mm -hmm. thinks it is but i know it's mm -hmm. not and if i go around saying to people what I was experiencing, I was afraid I was going to get locked up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to just know that I, I have to keep it for myself. Yeah. So I, I changed yeah. my life. Um, I was going to. I, uh, my family was in architecture, uh, mm -hmm. had a business, and I was going to graduate school in architecture. I worked all the way through college in construction. I'd been pushing a pencil at my dad's desk, at the, at the drafting table, as a kid, and um, I instead went to divinity school to study mysticism, mm -hmm. ended up getting ordained because the dean of students who gave me a three-year independent study uh, talked me into it. And I hid out in the church for 18 years as a minister, mm. uh, misleading the people into thinking that I was a believer, but worked very hard on behalf of, the, of those who were in great need and not just in the church, but in the wider community. Mm -hmm. um, and continued my mystical studies and my practice more in particular within a year after i died i found that i came back with an extra amount of people call prana shakti mm -hmm. chi yeah. Yeah. energy mm -hmm. uh, it was experiential for me i had a teacher who was i studied it was partly a theater person and he was a student of a student of marcel marceau who taught hatha yoga in the mime class and so I learned Hatha Yoga, and this teacher showed me using Hatha Yoga how to find my my energy, and it was physical for me. And I read uh, Patanjali, the Yoga Sutras, and the Yoga yeah. and Yogananda, and mm -hmm. began a Kriya Yoga practice, and combined it with my pre-existent centering prayer practice that I learned in Catholic school, and I embarked on an interior lonely journey for the next uh, forty close to forty years. Wow. Oh, Peter, this has been an incredible story. We're beyond past our I know. time, but wow. this has been so amazing that, again, time just disappears. So it, do, it, it just it doesn't matter. And we, we still have a lot of people here with us. I think more even people join. But this has been amazing. Uh, amazing. Yeah. I mean, your story is, is just amazing. It's beautiful. It's love. If what everybody needs right now, you know, and everybody that is watching this program need to hear this kind of stuff because you don't hear this on movies or people talking on the streets. You keep it for 40 years, and this is the time that this is have to come out. Same as me, it took me five years to tell the story. Same like Ingrid, it took years to understand yeah. and to swallow this story and to understand what was happening and I said, okay, I need to share this with the world. Yeah.
yeah. and now we're three are doing it. Yeah. Amazing, yes. Peter. I'm thank you so much for being with us. I really we have people it. saying bring him back more. Definitely. We, definitely. we will definitely because we were just before we, we were just yes. we could be talking here forever. Forever. And, and, we just get to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we get to talk with Peter, we kind of like we could just be there in the phone for hours telling just. I just want to say thank you to John Phillips. He said he just bought up my book. And he he have your book, Ingrid, and he have Peter book. So now he's gonna read the three book. Thank you, John. Yes, yes. Thank you everybody for joining. We we really I think sometimes people is more the admiration, the love, the there's not really more questions that people are mm -hmm. asking, but we had a big group of people that joined today and I know it's, it's just incredible. So yeah, I'm just hearing that what reading what David is saying. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for everyone to be here. And definitely, definitely Peter, you have to come back. You have to come back. So can I answer that one Kriya question really sure, fast? Sure, yes, sure. yes, of course. Kriya, Kriya Yoga combined with a practice of non-attachment creates a, a, a loss of attachment to self mm -hmm. and also uh, access to the prana energy, creating an interior space, bringing heaven here to my life. Sure. And, and, and I kept it a secret. Uh, my practice a secret, even from my wife. I she knew I practiced yoga and meditated, but nobody knew that I was practicing Kriya because either it was going to work or it wasn't going to work. And I didn't want to, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't want to be a fool if it didn't work. But it turned out that it does exactly what they said it did for me. I live in a I live in a bubble of heaven now, um, oh, here yes. and now. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's so beautiful, Peter. And thank you for sharing yeah, that you. bubble of light and love and compassion and well-being and greatness and expansion with all of us. You are just amazing. Yeah, oh, really I, story. A beautiful story. Thank you so I, much. I, I, I am so, so lucky to, to call you my friend. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mutual fan club, Ingrid. And it's yes. a pleasure to meet you, Carlos. Oh, oh, thank you. Of Same course, with Carlos. Thank you, Peter. Yes, thank you, Ingrid. Yes, Amazing. so thank you, thank you, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Is we will, oh, sadly, we only, we will be here. It will be take a little, little while for, for me to come back from my trip to Europe, but in one month or a month and a half, we will be live here again. Yeah, Reverend McDonald, he was saying, I'm watching you guys from England. So hey. I'm super happy to, to watch you right now. He's in Brighton, I think it is right now. Let me let me put his comment here. Like, I don't know if I can find it before we leave. So he was watching yes, your right, life yeah. from Brighton. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, that's that's it right there. Watching you live in Brighton, England, going to Berlin, Germany tomorrow. There you go. Yes. Spread the NDE light in Europe, you too. You and <laughs> you and yes, Bill. All of that. We 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 could be possible that we meet in in Prague. We don't know. Nice. We will see if the universe work make this happen. <laughs> but yeah, this is so we're spreading the word the light all over the world. And thanks to internet, that yes. barrier is already Global. broken. So <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you, Peter. Peter. Oh, Thank gosh, what an honor. And then, yes, see you. We will, of course, the moment that I'm back, we will announce to you that we will have our next live event. And like Carlos was saying, we're going to start doing it in Spanish, too. Yes, definitely. So here for everybody. Ciao. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Have a good weekend, yeah. everybody. Peace, everybody. Thank you. Peace. Love.
Se nos olvidó otra vez. Se nos olvidó. Se nos olvidó decirle a Pigan que no se fuera. Still alive, still alive. Le digo que se una rápido un momentico. Está en vivo. Todavía, Ingrid. Oh, yeah. ¿dónde? Aquí, yo lo estoy viendo. Oh, en stream. Oh, oh. Oh, 